All right. Well, in this video, I am going to do some example problems uh, for some given structural systems or structural components, whatever, uh, and determine if they are determinate, statically determinate or indeterminate. And just to, to recap, you know, statically determinate and indeterminate, statically determinate, SD here, statically determinate means that the number of reactions equals, or the number of unknowns equals the number of equilibrium equations right here. Statically indeterminate means that the number of reactions is greater than the number of equilibrium equations. And then something, a structure that would be unstable, unstable would be where the number of reactions are less than the number of equilibrium equations here. And so, anyways, if you need more information on that, there's, I think, a prior video that you can take a look at and, and get a, a brief introduction or explanation of each of those things. Um, but here, let's just look at some of these. We're going to look at uh, uh, statically indeterminate, uh, determinate for structure, statically indeterminate, and then we want to determine the degree of indeterminacy, which is essentially the number of additional equations we would need to solve for the reactions. Okay, so here let's take a look at this example A here. So here I have, a, I have this continuous beam with pin supports and rollers, and here at point A I've got a vertical reaction, a horizontal AX, a B, a Y, C, Y for the roller, and then D, Y, and D, X here. And so here I have, in terms of number of reactions, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six reactions. And the number of equations I have is three. So my so I, I'm statically indeterminate. This is statically indeterminate. And um, to the third degree, okay? The third degree or you know, the degree of indeterminacy, DOI, is equal to the number of reactions minus the number of equations. Right there, that would be our degree of indeterminacy. It's very simple. Okay, so that was a pretty simple example. Let's take here a look at this next one here. I've got this uh, uh, fixed support at A, a hinge connection at B, uh, connecting a horizontal member with a vertical member, and then another hinge at C. And then uh, uh, here, another horizontal element here. And if I, you know, the thing to do when you have a hinge is essentially blow up the drawing. Okay, so here I have got, I'm going to redraw this. I have here this member A, A B. Uh, I have my hinge location. I've got this vertical element here. And then I've got a, a horizontal element that I will put over here here and I want to draw first the external reactions that I know of here I have this a y a x and then a moment at a I have a pin support at D so D y and D x and then at the hinges because I break apart at the hinges here you know the hinges the there's a moment release so moments are zero at hinges and uh, um, all I have here are are the the shear and the axial that would be associated with the internal loading at the hinge. So this would be B, oops, B, Y, and B, X. And on the opposite face, I would have an equal and opposite. So here, this would be B, X, and this would be, this would be B, X, and this would be B, Y. Okay? Well, that would be equal and opposite there. And then same thing here. I have this, uh, <clears throat> if you will, I have a, uh, I have here a C, C, Y, and a CX, and then here it's so equal and opposite again. I would have a CY and a CX. Okay, and so what this tells me in terms of my number of unknowns or my number of reactions in this in this setup here and for this structure, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine reactions. The number of equations or equilibrium equations I have is three. So this is. Uh, statically indeterminate to the sixth sixth degree okay so that means i would need six additional equations to solve for this um this oh oh i, I actually messed this up oh no no not six additional equations here but right here the number of equations i have the number of equations i have is really i have for each drawing 
right here, for each member, well, I have three equilibrium equations here. I have three equilibrium equations. So that's, I have three equilibrium equations here, three equilibrium equations here, and three equilibrium equations there for a total of three times three of nine equilibrium equations, which makes this NR equal to NE, and this is statically determinant. This means I can apply, you know, some of the forces in the x, some of the forces y, some of the moments for this beam or for this element. And then again, for this element, I can apply three equilibrium equations and then three equilibrium equations for this element and then, and then work them all out together, you know. And so this is statically determined. I can solve for this one if I had a loading. And then here, for this one here, I also have this ay for this example, by and cy here. Now here, this is this is uh, um, I have number of reactions equals three, number of equations equals three, and I would think it's statically determinant. But but here I have uh, um, the case that my structure is actually not unstable. If I apply a, an external force going to the right, my structure is unstable, and so what this means is that that um, this is a, a, one of the caveats associated with determining whether or not something is determinate or indeterminate or stable. This would appear that it's statically determinate, but it's actually unstable. And one of the, one of the caveats or one of the rules is that if I have, uh, if, if NR is greater than or equal to NE, but I have concurrent forces, sorry, parallel forces, Parallel forces or reactions, let's just call it reactions, and or if I have uh, um, if I have a collapsible mechanism, but if one of these collapsible mechanisms exists, a collapsible mechanism, then then my structure then then structure is unstable. I have an unstable condition, okay? And so a collapsible mechanism would be something like a simply supported beam here, bam, like this, but I have a hinge here, okay? I have a hinge here, so this structure would actually collapse like, like this, bam, like that, okay? All right, so hopefully that provides some clarification on how to calculate or how to determine if something is determinate or indeterminate and, uh, um, and the degrees of indeterminacy, and then just make sure you have a you make you know you take a bigger look at the at the structural system to determine if you have you know a lot you know all parallel reactions or you have a collapsible mechanism that that is unstable even though it appears according to this rule uh, that it might be determinate or or indeterminate. Okay, all right. Let me know if you have any questions. Enjoy. Bye.